Hi, I'm Ai Weihe, an open source engineer from Huawei. Today, I'd like to share with you the topic Prometheus enabled AI deep observability based on ABPF. I'm going to start my speech from the following four aspects. First, let's talk about the current status of AI observability. Next, let's talk about open source projects for AI observability and how these projects collaborate to achieve AI observability. Finally, I will show you a simple example. Now, let's get to the point. Currently, all deep learning have one problem. The AI training process is invisible. When running an AI task, we, do know, we don't know how it's led, which CPU call is running, which kernel functions are called, and how to jump. Once a bottleneck occurs, developers often use some common monitoring tools to analyze the problem. However, these monitoring tools often have blind spots. For example, they can obtain the information about the long life processes, but some short life processes cannot be captured, which can result in information loss and a large number of these processes consume resources. In addition, these tools are inflexible and have low performance. The collected data often involves passing and copy from kernel space to user space several times. Next, let's look at the major open source projects that AI observability uses. First, we need an AI framework to run training tasks. Manisball is such a training and inference framework for deep learning. Now, let's talk about Manisball. <coughs> Manisball provides users with simple development experience. Uniform Python APIs for developers implementing parallel training by using serial serial expressions simplifies the development process and provides users with flexible debugging modes. Developers can switch between static mode and dynamic debugging modes by changing only one line of code to quickly locate faults. In addition, Manisball fully leverages the assumed processor performance and supports, and supports rapid deployment in all device edge in cloud scenarios. To learn more about Manisball technical details, please visit the following two websites to uh, download the Manisball codes. If Manisball is used to execute AI tasks, a new kernel monitoring tool may need to be developed to collect specific AI information. This tool needs to be recompiled into a kernel, which is arduous and cumbersome. In addition, the performance is poor. Data still needs to be copied from the kernel to the user space for multiple times. This is something we don't want to see. This requires us to use some technologies to flexibly and dynamically collect the kernel information we need without recompiling the kernel. The new technology is ABPF. Before we talk about ABPF, let's take a look at its predecessor, BPF. BPF is the short name of Berkeley Packet Field. It was originally developed in 1992 
to solve the problem of low efficiency of the existing packet filtering machine engine. BPF has two core features. One is field, which can be used to field out data packets that do not meet requirements based on the input rules. The other is copy. The packets that meet the conditions are copied from the kernel space to the user space. Let's look at the finger on the right to see the BPF workflow. When a packet arrives at the network card, the driver at the data link layer forwards the packet upward to the protocol stack. If the BPF is used to listen to the network adapter, the driver first calls the BPF to send packets to the filters of different programs. And they can filter uh, packets and uh, copy the packets that meet the rules to the corresponding program buffer. Compared with traditional BPF, BPF filters packets before buffering them. Instead of copying all pa uh, packets from the kernel space to the user space without filtering, BPF reduces resource consumption and improves work efficiency. Take TCP dump as an example. It captures only the data packets that pass through the local host. Run the TCP dump command. In the command, dst is used to uh, convert the entered expression into assembled code that can be read by humans as you are in the lower right fingers. That I indicates the local loopback address TCP and dest part 7070 indicates the filtering rule entered by the user. TCP dump depends on the PCAP library. Many core functions of TCP dump are implemented by the lab pickup library. As shown in the finger on the left, it accepts the packet filtering rule. Through lab pickup, the rule can be converted into procedure machine uh, language. After executing procedure code, Packets that meet the rule are copied to the user space through lab pickup. Now let's look at uh, the overload working process. Capture packets passing through the local loopback loop address and check whether the packets are IPv6 packets. If yes, go to step 002. If no, go to step 006. Then check whether the packets are TCP packets. If yes, go to step 006. Finally, the system checks whether the target part is 7070. If yes, the system proceeds to instruction 014 to forward the packet that meets the requirement. If no, the system proceeds to instruction 015 to discard the packet that does not meet the requirement. These rules can be used as if-else judgment control flows to field packets, which are simple and effective. Because of the efficient load of BPF in the packet filtering environment, in 1997, BPF was introduced into the Linux kernel version 2.1.75. At first, BPF only exists in the in a single file of network module directory in the kernel.
After BPF was introduced into Linux, uh, there are uh, there was little activity for a long time, except for minor performance adjustments, until version uh, three dot seventeen, the BPF file is added to the kernel slash bpf directory instead of a single feature in the network module directory. This is a new uh, this is the new technology ebpf that we are going to talk about today. Compared with the traditional bpf, ebpf bring brings uh, revolutionary changes. On the one hand, EPPF extends application scenarios from network packet filtering to kernel tracing, application performance optimization, uh, monitoring, and traffic control. In the past, this feature is used only in packet filtering scenarios and has not been expanded. Nowadays, ABPF is widely known and used as a new te uh, kernel technology. On the other hand, the procedure instruction set becomes more and more complex after the scenario is extended. And the traditional pure assembly development mode becomes unsuitable. Therefore, in terms of interface design and use, use, uh, uh, usability, ABPF has also uh, been great, uh, greatly improved by using the C language to, com uh, to write BPF code. As shown in the finger on the right, BPF was used only for network devices to field packets. Now BPF can be applied to uh, storage scenarios and can be hooked to any part of the kernel software stack for performance optimization and monitoring. Now let's look at the eBPF architecture. The eBPF can dynamically inject a code customized uh, by developers in the user space into kernel for execution without recom recompiling the kernel. The dynamic injection process is as follows. First, compile C code in user mode and dynamically inject it into the kernel for execution. Second, LLVM compiling and passing C codes to generate BPL bytecodes. Third, inject uh, BPL bytecodes into the kernel and perform two rounds of security check on the code. Fourth, executed after JIT optimization compilation. Fifth, create a shared map in the user space and the kernel space, and save execution result of the BPF bytecode to the shared map. This process does not require recompiling of kernel source code, which is flexible, efficient, and secure and lightweight. <coughs> Although eBPF can be implemented using C, the compiled ELF file is still generated. Development developers need to uh, manually pass the ELF and then inject them into the kernel. This is a complex task. To solve this problem, the BCC open source project called, called BC, a BPF Compiler Collection has emerged. 
is an open source Python library that implements functions such as a map creation, a code compilation, pathing, and injection. Developers only need to focus on developing specific ABBF code in the C language. Without considering how it's compiled, passed, and injected into the kernel, which brings great conven convenience to developers. For example, if we develop ABBF code and inject it into the kernel system call function, we can call the get sys call function provided by the BCC to obtain the Multiple system call function, and then use the attach kprobe function, attach the ebpf code to the corresponding kernel function. The following figure shows two fingers. The finger on the left is a performance monitoring tool that is not developed by ebpf. And the finger on the right is a performance monitoring tool that is developed by the ABPF. After the data in the left finger is copied from the kernel space to user space, it needs to be passed again to obtain this histogram. In the right finger, ebpf can be used to save the corrected data in the histogram format in a kernel space. The user space and the kernel space show the map, reducing the data copy and improving the execution efficiency. In addition, developers can dynamically inject ABPF custom calls into kernel for execution, which is inflexible and lightweight. During AI tasks, we hope that the monitored metrics can be displayed to developers so that they can visually understand the running status of each layer of AI tasks. The Prometheus monitoring management system is used here. Prometheus is an important member of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation CNCF ecosystem. It's second only to Kubernetes in activ acti activeness. Prometheus consists of components such as Prometheus Server and Exporters and provides visualization functions. Generally, an exporter function is provided for the target object to collect the required monitoring of metrics. Prometheus Server ob obtains uh, the monitoring metrics from the uh, from the exporter in a unified format and the display the metrics to uh, developers on the web page. Okay, I have introduced the minus for deep learning training and inference framework, ebpf kernel technologies, and the Prometheus monitoring manage management system. How can we uh, collaborate with them to achieve AI observability? Next, let's talk about the collect uh, Collaboration solution. Run first run a net, learn that task using Manisball to dynamically ch check changes in the kernel. Dynamical 
dynamically uh, attacked ABPF code to system call functions or kernel functions. Once these kernel functions are called, ABPF code is triggered to collect a predefined metrics. Integrate this metrics during AI inference and training and upload them to the Prometheus monitoring system to uh, implement observa observability of the AI kernel. <coughs> Let's see some simple examples. This is a simple ABPF example. The, the ABPF code segment is forked to the BLK account IO start function and the BLK account IO down kernel functions. Once the block account IO start and block account IO down functions are triggered. The ABPF code is executed to record the IO start and end timestamps, calculate the IO delay and display the IO delay in a histogram on the com command terminal. Displays the number of IO requests times in different times ranges. The preceding information is displayed on the, on the command terminal. Developers want to display it on the web pages. Inspired by the cloud fair uh, slash ebpf export open source projects, we can develop AI ebpf export to customize AI metrics, collect and display them on the web page using Prometheus. Finally, we use the MySpot framework to execute the LearnNet task inject the hello ABPF code segment into the block account IO down kernel function. Once the Manspore learner task invokes the block account IO down kernel function, hello world is displayed. Otherwise, no information is printed. Currently, this solution is in the early stages of experiment experiment and in the future most importantly we should analyze what should be done in AI scenarios, what can be used and what can be tracked from thousands of available kernel events, then cooperate with other open source communities to Develop an ABPF based human AI observability tool, enabling enabling Manspot to support the ABPF AI observation to work with Prometheus and ABPF export to visualize AI kernel metrics. We hope that more developers can participate and discuss how to implement and improve AI observability. Thank you.